A tribute to Cousin Gladys. The ones we love are never gone. They live within our hearts. Dear Peter and family, you can shed tears that she's gone or you can smile because she lived for 96 years. You can close your eyes and pray that she'll come back or you can open your eyes and see all she's left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see her or you can be full of the love you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember her and only that she's gone or you can cherish her memory and let it live on. Rest in peace, Cousin Gladys from Maggie, Fatima, Denise, John and their families. Good morning everyone. I am here to say a few words on my family's memory of our Cousin Gladys and final farewell. Gladys was the second daughter of our deceased Aunt Diddy, Alice Benjamin. She was born and raised in the Trace, Mount Carmel, and attended the St. Giles Anglican School. On leaving school, she worked at George F. Huggins and Company Limited until her retirement. From the Trace, the family moved to Walker, St. Andrews, where she resided prior to becoming a resident at the Hilarion Home, St. Patrick's, until her passing. When she retired from Huggins, she lovingly cared for her mom and Aunt Derby at the family home. Cousin Gladys was loved by the neighbors of Walker, and one can quite frequently hear them calling out to her as they passed, Miss Daniel, Miss Gladys, or Auntie Gladys. She would be remembered for her smile and a giving personality, and who knows that little black car, P1300. She was an ardent Catholic. She not only attended church as often as was possible, but supported church activities. She adored her son Peter, and we know he too adored her. As a youngster, he called her Dudu. He was the apple of her eyes. Cousin Gladys will be missed by many, but we give thanks for the time she shared, not only with her, but Auntie Diddy and Cousin Elaine. They are now reunited, and those left will have the memories. Rest in peace. Cousin Gladys from John. Oh 
the church well. Is Miss Carryman here? She's not here, but she said she was going to come. And then Miss Carryman remember her teaching her the faith. I thought she would have been here, but she's not here. So to all of you who have come to the Daniel family, <coughs> the Henwood family, all of you and our brother, Pleased to have you as we do this service for our dear sister Gladys. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, our sister Gladys Daniel, she died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with Christ eternal glory. We use water at funerals. It's appropriate to use because if you enter in somebody's house, you enter through the door and you leave through the door. You don't go through a window if you, you're a brig and a thief or something. If you go through a window, you go through the door. But when Gladys entered this Christian life many years ago, she entered it through baptism, through water and uh, the Holy Spirit. And in that way, we are sending her back using water again, sending her back to the same entrance that she entered in. So the water is used today as a sign of our baptismal sharing in Christ, redeeming passion and resurrection. And in the waters of baptism, our sister Gladys died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. Brothers and sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ, who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death, and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. Let us now pray for our sister Gladys, that she may share in Christ's victory. And let us pray for ourselves, that the Lord may grant us the gift of his love and consolation. Almighty God and Father, 
It is a sudden faith that your son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Gladys, who has gone to her rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through Christ Jesus, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Say, so sit down, we have a seat for you. And we do the reading. Now, the first reading. You stand on this side.
that because I worked with Huggins for uh, a short time too before entering ministry and I he worked in an acceptable and she was always there and gone. She she's a person that answered much really. She don't see, she don't hear, she don't hear. Very assertive of herself and very competent. Very competent too. I know her because at the time in her days and growing up as a child, everybody used to go to church. Not as today. A lot of people don't go to church. And she was always there. And Mount St. Kevin's Chapel was a chapel where if you went to Holy Mass, you always come there to the Holy Mass. And she would walk across from, what do you call it, post roll or walk or the land or whatever. And she started coming there. She would go to Munich too. And then when, we, when I built a little chapel in the Pando, she was one of the faithful members there. In the Blando. Then after a time, she grew and she wasn't strong enough to come out again. So we used to go and visit her. We used to go and visit her. And um, he brought her the sacraments. 
times we probably would have anointed her. And we kept, the church kept those contact with her. Because she was a faithful member of the church. Very faithful member of the church. Why, when one person from Mount Carmel said, uh, Oh, when she's buried, not buried today. Oh, I would like to come because she, she, I wasn't a Catholic. And she prepared me in a way to be received in the church as a Catholic. She played her role in the church too. She was with us in life. We are now with her in death. We are with her in death. I missed her for some time when I saw the house closed down because she was always very, kept her house very well. And then the house was not being kept very well again. And I said, well, nobody is there. Well, what happened? I was told that she was taken to the home. And I felt glad for her. That she was taken to a place where she can be kept for. And that's where she died. That's where she died. Maybe if it wasn't for COVID, she would have been still alive with us today. But may God rest her soul. She gave of what God gave to her. It was not too much for her to give. And we hope that God will give her back many blessings in return. One of the things that I hope that she would benefit from is what Jesus says in the gospel. I will come back and take you to me, to be with me, that where that you may also be where I am. Where I am. Jesus is speaking about the future here, where I am. Where is Jesus? We told we have been told in the creed that He is seated at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. And that's where He is. There was mother, there was one, this mother who asked for two, the favors for her two sons, one to sit on the left and the other on the right of, side of Jesus. And Jesus told her, Madam, that is not for me to give, that is for my the Father in heaven to give. Because that was Jesus' place where he is now seated at the right hand of God the Father. So he could not have done that. And uh, he had to turn that mother down. He had to turn her down. He said, no, I can't. So that's where Jesus is. And it's good to hear that he said, maybe where I am. And in the scriptures we hear that a, a place where there are many rooms in my father's house. Many, many rooms. I, we just have to take God for his word. There are many rooms. And he says, he wants us to enter into a clean room in the room where we'll be comfortable and happy. And he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you may be as well, again, his eagerness to have us with him, wherever he is, his eagerness to have Gladys with him, where he is at this time. That's what he has promised to all of us. He has promised us that. He has promised us eternal life. He has promised us that where he is, we'll be as well. And gone to prepare a place for us. 
when that final day comes, okay, Gladys is finally has passed, but that's not the end of her life. There's, we believe that Jesus is going to come at some time, in his own time. He's going to come to judge the living and the dead. So when he comes, he will go walk around the cemetery and maybe he probably wouldn't take the, make the effort of going everywhere. He will just stand one place and just call all those who we buried years and years ago to come out again. And then he will quickly separate them as the shepherd would do. The sheep from the goat. goats. Separate them. That tells us of how God, Jesus, uh, God is going to function on that final day. How will separate us? Because if we have done anything good, we will be rewarded for goodness. But if we have done anything bad, of course, we will be rewarded for what bad. We go to hell. We go either to hell to heaven or to hell. And that choice is our choice. Your choice and my choice. Where you want to go. Because when Jesus comes back, he comes to judge us where we want to go. By the things that we do as members of the church, Members of the church, we don't have just to think about our own selves, our home and so forth, but we have to think of people as well. How you mingle with people, what you do for people. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. What? He's going to question you. What have you done? Whom did you serve? What did you do? Did you visit the sick? Those in prison? What did you do? And he's going to ask you, and if you try to abuse with him, he's going to ask you again, well, what did you do? And he will do any finish with all those who have been buried, as we are burying Gladys today. Then he will come to the few of us who stand listening to him. The you, the you, the you, the me, and all of us, and he will tackle us. And then he will start judging from among us whether we were faithful or not. This is a re real thing, you know. It's not something for us to take lightly. We must take it seriously. Because Christ is going to come again. And the last day to judge the living and the dead is going to come. So that for some to bring them to that place he has gone to prepare for us and where he is. And some he may be here to start for us. Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting power prepared for the devil and his angels. We don't want to hear that. So my dear brothers and sisters, Gladys did her bit. She served in the churches well as she can. She was faithful. She had love for others. She expressed that love others and we pray that God will show her love in the final stage of her life as we await his second coming. May God help us to be watchful. If we can learn anything from the life of Gladys, let's for God's sake Let's learn it. If we can think about her seriousness as she served the people, 
the church, her committedness, her dedication, her service to the church, whatever we can think about. Let's be serious about it. And let's pray that her soul now may find the rest with the Lord. Amen. Eternal rest granted to her, Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon her. May her soul rest in peace. Amen. We now stand for this. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all people, living and dead. For our sister Gladys, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. For Sister Gladys, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray. We pray for the, those who have fallen asleep the hope of the rise, of rising again, that they may see God face to face. We pray to the Lord. Lord yeah, we are here as mourners, as friends, as family. And so we pray for each other, for the family and friends of our sister Gladys, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those of us who are assembled here, those who are streaming with us wherever they are, all the family and friends overseas. All those who worship in faith, we pray that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I don't think very seldom we pray for the undertakers mm. or the lack of oil and the pathway and the, and the at, um, we, and others. we don't pray for them, but we want to pray for them because they need our prayers. Maybe they are so busy too at times, not having time to even pray for themselves. We pray that God may sustain them, especially at this time, and that God may keep them so that they can continue serving the nation and serving the people of our nation. Bless them all, all the undertakers in a very special way. And look after all the needs. Some people may think it's just the money they're after. And they're making money, and that's what they would see. But no, they're giving a service. But if we don't have a person who could prepare the dead for burial, it's going to be sad for all of us. So we pray and ask God to bless them and to strengthen them in His love. And for that, I pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength. You listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And this time now we sing another hymn. How great thou art. Oh, great. Oh, no. 
the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. of God come to her aid, hasten to meet her angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May the angels lead you in the bosom, to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. The eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let, let perpetual light, light shine, shine upon her. her. So rest in peace. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Gladys in the show and sudden hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Gladys in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith. Until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister and with our sister forever, we ask this through Christ of our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gladys, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. And may the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. Eternal rest grant unto her, O oh Lord. And let her let your light shine upon her. May her soul rest in peace. Amen. And may her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, to the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. We have a hymn. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel's guide uphold you. We will seek security for you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet. Trying to pick up the pieces 
I need your hand Lord, help me through the storm I can't make it if you don't hold my hand My financial situation You who are blessed by my father says the Lord Inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world Lord Jesus Christ by your own three days in the tomb You hollowed at the graves of all who believe in you And so made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection even as it claims our mortal bodies grant that our sister Gladys may sleep here in peace until you awaken her to glory till you awaken her to glory For you are the resurrection and the life, then she will see you face to face, and in your light see light and know the splendor of God, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Because God has chosen to call her sister Gladys from this life to herself, we commit her body to the earth. It's rest in place, but let's not forget that we are just and on to dust we shall return. For the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies into copies of his own glorious body. For he is reason the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our sister Gladys to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace her in peace and raise up her body on the last day. Lord, you console Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for our sister Gladys and dry the tears of those who weep. We pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. We pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. You raised the dead to life, gave our sister Gladys eternal life. We pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. You promise paradise to the repentant thief. Bring Gladys to the joys of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table of your heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of Gladys. Let our faith be our consolation and let eternal life be our hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. And with longing for the for God, for the coming of God's kingdom, we pray again, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, gracious, who grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. God of holiness and power, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant Gladys. Do not conquer deeds against her, for in her heart she desired to do your will. As her faith united her to your people and earth, so may your mercy join her to the angels in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people cry to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your last condition. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May her soul rest in peace. May her soul and the soul of all the faithful and all the faithful departed, the mercy of God. Rest in peace. Amen. We have the final day. What a friend we have in
of God which is beyond all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his son our Lord Jesus Christ amen and the almighty God bless you father son and holy spirit amen go in the peace of Christ see the God have a wonderful day everybody
Thank you, Father. Same to you. How are Thank you.